Hello Aries, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Aries, here is a really nice pyramid. We have the beautiful star and key in your cards. And these are two very happy wish fulfilling cards. They bring a lot of good, a lot of happiness and success. Now we do have um, quite a, a powerful combination here in the bottom line. We have the scythe and house. And typically, Aries, this would point to a change of residence, a move, or some other changes that are happening. And we see it with the bear. So the bear can suggest a couple of things here. It, it can mean that the changes that happen are important ones and big ones. And it can also point to someone in relation to the space. Often, the house and bear represents parents. Um, and so there can be changes with regards to your parents or with their relationship. I'm not really seeing something like a divorce, but I, I can't dismiss such a possibility. And also Aries, the bear with the house often represents someone in authority, like a manager or someone like that. And with the scythe, there can be some big changes here, and there can also be something that happens suddenly. Now, because the rest of the cards are positive, these changes are not challenging or dramatic. Instead, they are actually positive. Uh, the rider and star is lovely for wish fulfillment. Uh, the rider is often a messenger card, and so we could be looking at news or forward movement and goals. And with the star, there is an element of wish fulfillment and achieving goals. So the rider here helps you achieve your goals or it delivers uh, answers that you want to hear. Uh, it answers your hopes. It brings you positive feedback. And the key is obviously another very positive card. It points to unlocking opportunities, op um, getting, uh, getting access to certain things and also achieving your goals just like with the star. So really the top three cards are beautiful. They bring wish fulfillment and happiness across the board. Now, now in view of the bottom line, the changes that we saw in there can open up this opportunity. The changes would be things that you want to see happen, or they clear up the space so that you can make these goals happen. And also they can enable you to release yourself in order to dedicate yourself to what is here. It's also possible Aries that you need to release yourself from a certain environment because you pursue something else in here. Now the scythe with the rider and key also supports this. Uh, it can point to a sudden change or a sudden piece of news that comes through or sudden movement that we see through the rider. And obviously with the key, it really answers your hopes. And the bear star and uh, key is very beautiful. We have the two bright cards next to each other. And with the bear, which makes everything big and important, we could be looking at some major goals achieved this week, Aries. Um, and this could be on a bigger scale. You, you could be looking at growth and promotion and an element of stepping up because the bear makes everything big and important. So in the context of work, we could be looking at some kind of promotion or success in other ways. In other areas of your life, you could be looking at big changes that open up opportunities. And with people, to bring this element into the picture, Aries, with people, there are also great opportunities. Now, even though we have the scythe next to the house, uh, the rest of the cards here, the top ones especially, can point to happy messages, happy connections, good news, and uh, get together when we see the uh, rider with the house. I actually take the rider and house to suggest a visitor, and, and so I wonder if there could be something like that happening for you as well. In all cases, Aries, this is a lovely moment uh, this week where things open up and there's progress and forward movement. I would suggest that you be ready to act on your feet and to respond pretty quickly. The scythe can be urgent and the rider is also a speedy card. So you don't want to waste time. You want to make the changes that you need to make. Um, get, connect with the people that you can connect with in order to take advantage of, these, um, of this opportunity that comes your way. So embrace your success and go with the flow Aries because it's looking really good. Let me know what you make of these ideas, how you've resonated with the cards. In view of your specific circumstances, I always look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Thank you for tuning in. Very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Taurus, here is your pyramid. It's looking a little bit challenging, but I think you're able to move on from this. 
it looks like there is some news that comes through that is disappointing or maybe it's outright bad news uh, and we see that it's in relation to this person here represented by the woman uh, but it's nice to see the ship at the top because the ship is a movement card it is it has flow and you know with with the challenges behind it it's like you move past it and you throw it behind you and you're able to move on it's also possible Taurus that you need to make this announcement and perhaps the news is disappointing to some people uh, but uh, you need to maybe get it out and move on and I think this is what the focus on this week so looking at the bottom line we have the letter with the mouse and lady or the woman so the mouse or mice actually in this deck it's plural in this deck uh, they tend to be challenging a little bit uh, they suggest annoyances bumps little things that go wrong here and there and obviously with the letter there is somewhat challenging news or disappointing news and with a person it brings up also issues with this person uh, typically the mice with um, people cards in relationships they tend to suggest issues of trust um, and so what I think is happening here is that maybe news comes through that you know reflects a little bit on this person and it gives you doubts and question marks it's also possible um, Taurus and, and it's not so it's not very frequent but it's possible that this person is going through some issues and perhaps this is what you need to attend to now the uh, whip with the tower is also a challenging combination the whip is actually the most challenging card of the deck and so it brings up conflict confrontations quarrels problems um, the tower is a card of the past of the long term um, and it can also suggest people in authority legal matters administration and things like that so there can be challenges with regards to something from the past it can also suggest a break away from the past where you release this situation it can suggest that the paperwork or the procedure that you're following up on or pursuing uh, doesn't come through uh, there can also be problems with certain figures of authority and uh, and people like that and with the woman here as we see in this side of the diagonal uh, she could be the person in question uh, she could be the person who is in that level of authority or this relationship from the past um, that is tied to the problems that we see in this side of the pyramid uh, the ship at the top though is a lovely card because the ship is a card of flow and movement and so it's pretty clear that despite the challenges Taurus you're gonna move on um, and I think this this could be what is happening as a whole that you're gonna uh, either this comes through and it's disappointing and you're like okay whatever moving on from this it's not working or you're the one who makes this announcement that you're turning something down moving away from someone or letting go of the situation and you're moving on uh, either scenario can can be at play uh, depending on your specific stores so we looked at this side looking at this side we have a confirmation of this we have the letter and the whip um, and then we have the ship so obviously the whip and letter clearly points to some disappointing news challenging news challenges in general and it's a bit like what we saw with the mouse and letter except that the whip is a bit stronger and then we have the ship so having the whip and ship usually points to a bumpy ride and problems with the journey or you know the adventure that you're pursuing uh, but it, as we said it can also be a suggestion that you move past the challenges you throw them behind you as it were and you move on so definitely Taurus a bit of a challenging moment this week uh, it seems to be tied to a news element with people with a person and it's like you have to move on from this and I think you do that successfully so I'm not saying this is the easiest transition but I do think you transition successfully despite the challenges you're able to throw this behind you and move ahead and also Taurus the cards can figure in any context so I suggested that there could be a legal admin thing it could also be a work related matter but it could be in any context of your life the idea is that there is challenging news and you have to move on from it um, there is a challenge with a person and you have to maybe let go uh, of the the situation within which this person figures or perhaps the relationship itself and you move on 
Now, in some more challenging cases, or shall we say in a more extreme scenario, we could be looking at something like a breakup, a layoff, um, a resignation, you know, something that's a bit sharper, that points to a, a pretty significant change and a release from a situation or a chapter or perhaps a long-standing situation. Same goes to a relationship. So a bit bumpy this week, like I said, Taurus, but again, I have confidence that you're going to move past it. Um, I would say don't hang on. Uh, if you need to take a stand, make a point, or, or announce this news, if that's on you, um, then do this and then move on. I would say dwelling on this is unnecessary. I think it's um, it's sufficiently loaded, shall we say, Taurus. So, so, you know, gather your momentum and move past it. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Taurus. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for watching. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Gemini, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay Gemini, here is your pyramid. It's looking pretty good. It's looking generally neutral uh, and also gentle and consistent, like uh, predictable moving forward. We have the man in the cards, uh, points to a relationship or someone. And we have the moon, which I think is the energy that brings that element of uh, softness to your reading. Now the stork with the man and moon can suggest an invitation. Uh, the moon can be an offer, a proposal, it is often associated with work, and certainly with the stork there's like, um, there's like an invitation that comes through. It could be the man inviting you or perhaps you inviting this person um, and it's looking pretty, pretty nice. Like we're seeing the cards uh, overall are pretty neutral and gentle. The lily and bear, interestingly enough, Gemini, can point to work and career. It is also sometimes a combination of law and legal matters. Uh, it can point to someone in authority or someone senior. And um, it can also be a combination of work and career because the lily is associated with career and uh, the bear can suggest someone senior or someone in authority. So it's looking like this invitation or this proposal or this event or opportunity that is happening with you uh, between you and this person uh, can lead to some enhancements of your career, your life, your lifestyle in general. Now the road at the top here suggests uh, like an open-ended uh, situation. The road is a movement card. It tends to be open-ended and we see it at the peak of your pyramid. And it is a, a card of change and the path forward. Sometimes it's associated with choices. I'm not really seeing a choice element in your cards. I think it's more about the path ahead and that this uh, invitation or this collaboration uh, opens up um, like a path forward for you. Now the outcome of this path is not really seen in the card, uh, in the cards, uh, and that's why I was saying that the you know the road at the top gives this open-ended uh, reading. But it's definitely something you're going to focus on this week, and it's encouraged. It can open opportunities. It can help you grow. Uh, it can you know open up to interesting things down the line. We're seeing like a really kind, gentle, and sort of stable energy in the cards. The story clearly and road is great for progress in your career. Uh, it can be a milestone that you achieve or that you pursue. And uh, again, there is like a very predictable, easy and peaceful unfolding here for you. And the stork being a card of initiative, it is definitely a good idea to take the initiative to move forward and to make things happen. And in the context of your pyramid, Gemini, it certainly has to do with, um, you know, being there with this person or giving this opportunity a chance, like, uh, you know, moving, moving down the road with it to see what it come, what it brings up. The moon, bear and road is similar. Um, the moon and bear again can suggest an invitation. It's great for offers and proposals. It can point to growth and a sense of popularity or a sense of um, like enhancing your profile. And with the road, again, there's that element of going down that path. The bear is a strong card. It is a card of courage and empowerment. So this can prove to be a really good opportunity for you, Gemini, if you just give it a chance, you spend time with this person, you understand what can be done together, uh, and you, you, know, you explore the path ahead. Now, I do think that the cards are a bit more 
a professional oriented or you know they have to do with your projects and things like that and I'm not really seeing so much a personal love feeling attraction kind of cards uh, but for some of you Gemini's out there this can be about a personal relationship and if it is it is still a very supportive uh, pyramid there is a uh, soft gentle energy here we could be looking at attraction and um, chemistry uh, through the energy of the moon and with the lily and road and the bear and road this can be an important relationship that develops and I, I think also over the longer term so it can be something a bit more serious so a lovely set of cards, I would say, Gemini, like easygoing with opportunity, even though it's not like super wow, you know, super bright, it's still quite solid and, and stable. And that can be a really enjoyable process moving forward. So give this opportunity and this relationship a chance, see what it leads to, see if you can grow through it and be open-minded to what's ahead. So let me know how you like these ideas, Gemini. Leave me your thoughts and comments. As always, I look forward to them. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Cancer, here is your pyramid and it's looking really interesting. We have a couple of bright cards, the clover and the anchor, especially the clover. It is a very lucky card. We have the fox that is a little bit tricky, but it can also come to your advantage. Uh, we have the book as well that is secretive, especially with a card like the fox. Now I'm suspecting an offer, a work offer, or some kind of proposal or project that could open up for you but it can also suggest other things depending on your specifics. So starting with the bottom row, Cancer, we've got the Anchor, Fox, and Clover. Now the Fox is a tricky card, right? It is a card of deception and it tends to represent someone who is self-interested. At the same time, Cancer, the Fox is someone clever. It is someone who knows what they want and um, you know they know how to get it. Now the anchor is a card of staying, of staying put. And with the fox, I really think that um, it is definitely a good idea for you to, to continue working on what you're doing, to not give up on this, and to also be insistent on achieving your goals. So maybe it's not through an aggressive, confrontational, or direct way. It is through an indirect way with the fox. But don't give up on this, Cancer, because you are going to get what you want. And the clover is definitely a, a lovely card that confirms achieving goals, things working out for you, even if it's not exactly how you imagine them to work out. In another sense, Cancer, if the fox represents someone tricky or someone who's trying to be deceiving, I think with the anchor and clover, you're definitely going to see through them and you are protected from them. So the clover is also a card of protection and the anchor is really good with having healthy boundaries. So I'm really seeing an element of protection here uh, and achieving your goals even through the indirect way. Now, the road and book is uh, definitely going down a path that you don't know much about. Uh, the book is a card of mystery and with the road it definitely points to mysteries down the road. It can also mean that you don't really know where you're going or you don't know where this is heading. You might need to do some research or find out or you know dig in uh, into some information or you know tune into some uh, knowledge here. Uh, that is totally fine you know I think that um, uh, the cards in the bottom row they really encourage you to go for that and uh, the fox encourages you to be aware as much as possible and the book helps you with digging out this information. So it might not all be clear where this is heading cancer but you are encouraged to give this a try not to give up on it because you could come out with some really good things. Now the lily at the top can point to a few different things. It's often a card of life path, lifestyle and also career. Uh, it is also a more peaceful card and it can also be associated with wisdom and growth and a sense of seniority. So it looks like you could be deepening your wisdom, you could be gaining experience through this experience and it could also contribute to your work, your career and your profile as a whole. And the thing about the fox and lily is that they often represent work. The fox is the card of jobs and the lily is about the bigger career path but together they can point to your work life. Um, so this can be about your work life, this can be a situation that you need to pursue and to stick with even though it's not really uh, clear where it's heading because it looks like at the end of the day you find yourself in a stable situation and things work out thanks to the clover. 
Looking at the anchor road and lily, we have a similar confirmation cancer, the idea that you need to stick with the current path and grow within it. It can give you knowledge and experience. Uh, it also creates a sense of uh, stability for you over the longer term. And the clover book and lily is also great for knowledge and experience. Maybe you're enhancing your skills, maybe you're learning something, uh, maybe you're taking a course. All of it is supportive. And in terms of the mystery element of the book, again, you're encouraged to go down this path. Uh, you're going to you're gonna get the hang of it. You're going to be able to discover what you need to as you go. And like we said, it looks like it's going to be supportive of you. Um, so obviously, Cancer, this seems to be focused on your path, on your projects, on the things that you're doing. We're not seeing people. We're not seeing home. We're seeing mostly job and you know, career kind of cards. Of course, it doesn't have to be strictly that for you. It can be about your path in life more generally. Uh, but it seems to be you and your path this week. You know, it seems to be a bit more solo, um, more about you and where you're heading and not so much other people and your social life. Make it a point, Cancer, to focus on yourself and your career and your path. Have faith in yourself that you're going to you know, figure things out as you go. And if this is about deepening your knowledge, polishing up your profile and doing interesting things like that for yourself, then go ahead and do them. You're going to find that it pays off. So a lovely set of cards. I'd say pretty peaceful, Cancer. Let me know what you make of them. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Leo, here is your pyramid. It's looking pretty bright. We have both the stars and the flowers, and these are very optimistic and happy cards. Uh, the stars in particular is about wish fulfillment. We also have the fish at the top, and the fish is often a card of money, work, business, enterprise, and things like that. Um, and so I'm suspecting that this has to do with your work life, your financial affairs, and this sort of uh, areas in your life. Now what stands out is that we have the letter and bird, and both of these are communication cards, and we have the coffin, which is a card of endings. So, so Leo, we could be looking at something that ends for you. I'm suspecting something like a resignation or something along those lines or some kind of situation that enables you to close off uh, a phase or a chapter. Uh, but again, I want to remind you, Leo, that the cards are very bright. And so this is looking like a happy ending of sorts, uh, if it is an ending as such. So looking at the bottom line, we have the stars with the flowers and the letter. Obviously, this is really good news. Uh, probably news that answers a wish. So I'm thinking something along the lines of a congratulations or a celebration or some kind of, um, you know, positive feedback that is very happy for you. So any way you look at these cards, they point to really good news for you. Now, the bird and coffin is a card of endings. It can also be a time of um, silence or when things were on hold. Uh, and that could also be part of, um, you know, the, the happiness that comes through. Maybe you're hearing back from someone after a time. Uh, but I also think that, I also think this can be a transition of sorts. And in the, in the context of work, for example, maybe you get an offer and so you end what, what you're involved with right now. Uh, you know, maybe you get a new job and you move on from the current job and so you have to announce an ending or that you're leaving and things like that. Uh, now the fish at the top is a card of money and prosperity in general and I think it's really nice to see it with these cards here in the bottom. But what I'm also thinking is possible, uh, Leo, is that maybe you take a vacation. Maybe you have an opportunity to go somewhere. Um, you know, you have an opportunity to take a break or maybe spend on yourself a little bit. That is possible. But on the flip side, because of the coffin next to the fish, it could be a good idea to um, put some financial decisions on hold and um, uh, you know, sort of taking a, a step back for perspective. Now, I, I realize that the interpretations are somewhat opposite, but I think that the key for you, uh, the key for you to take away is to do what enhances your prosperity and also to do what makes you happy. So that, you know, the way this materializes for you specifically can be different. Now, the star, bird, and fish is actually really beautiful for prosperity, for making more money. Um, you know, the star and fish is really great. Um, the bird and fish would normally point to 
financial transactions and things like that. But I think with the star, it's not like mundane in this way. I think it's more, uh, you know, it's more about wish fulfillment and a sense of prosperity and happiness. And I think what that can do is that it can reduce your anxieties a little bit about your finances or anything in relation to that. And I say that because the bird can be a card of anxiety at times. Now the letter and coffin and fish can point to a wait for funds. Uh, usually the coffin and fish points to waiting for funds or waiting for um, to do something with your money and things like that. And with the letter, this is where I felt there can be a delay of sorts. But again, when we see these very bright cards, uh, it suggests, Leo, that you could finally hear back, uh, you could get what you were waiting for, um, you, could, you could hear the news that it's, um, you know, it's what you want and things like that. So any way you look at these cards, they're, they're really good. You know, they bring happiness, they bring fulfillment and a sense of prosperity, probably after a time of waiting. And like I suggested earlier, if you're getting an opportunity for a new job, it could be reflected in this, uh, this side of the pyramid and also in the bottom line. Or if you're looking to make a certain move with your projects, your business or your finances, then this could be a really good time. And it can involve you ending what you're currently doing in order to take advantage of this opportunity. And overall, Leo, I'm, I'm seeing a focus on you, your path, your you know, your investments, what you're focused on. And we're not seeing really much uh, in relation to your social life. Yes, we have the news element, but this is more like the input that you get in order to open up this opportunity. And it, it's not so much about one-on-one -on -one relationships. Uh, that's my feeling anyway from these cards. You let me know how you resonate with them and let me know how it played out for you. What was this opportunity or what was this thing that you're ending in order to take advantage of what's, uh, what's at hand. So very best of luck with this week, Leo. Um, enjoy this week. Let me know how it plays out. Thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Virgo, this is looking exciting. We have a new beginning happening here and um, we see it with the path and the beautiful key which is a card of success and unlocking opportunities and what's uh, interesting is the snake now the snake is usually a tricky card it is the card of deception and dishonesty especially in relationships but it also has a clever side virgo and um, clearly with something like the key it's very much about solutions and being sharp about what you want and knowing what you want and how to get it and also Virgo with the anchor the snake is about not giving up on something and also with the anchor the snake is about not giving up on something so usually when we see the snake and anchor together there can be an inclination to give up on something but the anchor encourages you to give it a chance and to stick with it and when we see the child here it does encourage you to move down this new beginning uh, to give this opportunity a try. Um, so that is quite encouraging. Now the key and road is great for a path that leads to success. It can also point to an opportunity to go down a certain path. Sometimes the road is associated with choices, especially with a card like the cross and a few other cards. Uh, but obviously with the key, uh, you're gonna make the right choice. And I think this ties into this new beginning because we see in this side of the pyramid, uh, the child and the road. Now the cross at the top is quite interesting. Uh, the cross can be sometimes a challenging card pointing to duties and obligations and a sense of heaviness and a sense of having to do something. But the cross is also a card of destiny and life lessons and things that are meant to be. And so with this a new path and this new beginning that we're seeing here, this can really lead you down some important lessons, Virgo, where you can learn some important things for you. Um, there can be some major life lessons, some key takeaways, and uh, some important experiences that you get to experience um, if you move into this new beginning. So it's very clear from your pyramid, Virgo, that if even if you're having a bit of hesitation and doubts about this new beginning, it is definitely encouraged. Uh, the snake key and cross is lovely. I really think this has to do with um, uh, seeing signs and being aware and um, 
also being connected with your sense of purpose. Uh, the snake is, you know, it's a bit uh, careful and discreet and it goes in this roundabout way. Uh, so you're going to find your way around this and uh, also remain aware about the goals and the signs and the lessons that you're going to get out of this. Uh, the child with the road is obviously a new chapter, a new road, a new direction. And with the cross, like I said, I, I did suggest this can be a choice where you're at crossroads, uh, but also, and especially because of the key and the other cards, um, this can lead you to some important life lessons and some you know, major experiences. I don't think you're going to regret this, uh, Virgo. I think um, it, it's going to be really interesting for you. So see if you give this a chance and you try moving into this new beginning and see what you get out of it. I think you're going to come out with some some positive experience, some insights and some really interesting takeaways. And also the cards are kind of general, Virgo. They don't really tell us if this is about your personal life, your professional life or in some other area. Uh, so it can be in any of these or it could be across your life in general. Uh, but one thing is that I'm not really seeing a relationship theme at all in the cards, Virgo. So it seems to be more about you, your path and your experience uh, with this new beginning. Let me know how you like these ideas. Let me know what is this new path that you're maybe holding off a little bit from doing. I certainly look forward to learn about your thoughts and your experience with this. So leave me a comment or two. Thank you as always for tuning in Virgo. Very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Libra, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid today with the Zen deck. Let's go ahead and deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Libra, here is your pyramid cards. And I have to say they're quite interesting. There's a few things happening here and there can be a few different scenarios. Uh, but there are a couple of standout cards. There's the coffin and the book. And I really think with the ship, which is a card of journeys and travels, um, it points to, I think, a closure and the end of a chapter. I also feel that you might want to put something aside, at least for some time. So if it's not a complete ending or a complete closure of something, you might want to take a break from it and put it aside. It seems to me that maybe you're not finding answers and maybe you've tried. Uh, it sounds like you've been pursuing, finding out some answers because of the book and ship. Um, but the coffin here, it sounds like maybe you didn't, you didn't find the answers that you want. So maybe putting it aside for a while and coming back to it later, it can help. And like I said, this can be an outright end of a journey. Now, what's really nice is the mountain and the stars. And the stars is a very bright card. It is a card of wish fulfillment and happiness and healing. And um, we see it here with the mountain. And uh, the mountain is potentially another card of travel. It is associated with places abroad, locations that are farther from where you are. Uh, but it is also sometimes a card of obstacles. So sometimes when you're not able to find answers, where you face a blockage, the mountain can appear to suggest that. So it's a bit similar to what we're seeing in the bottom row in this sense, right? The idea that you're trying to pursue something, you're trying to find something out, and it's not really coming through. So we see that this is mirrored um, by the mountain, which is a blockage card. And what's furthermore interesting uh, is that we have the clouds at the top. And the clouds, Libra, is a card of confusion, uh, stress, um, when things are not clear, you know, when things are nebulous. So the star is a very bright card, but everything else in your pyramid is really pointing to an idea that you're not finding answers, you're not getting clarity, you're not gaining understanding. And so it's really interesting to see it in contrast with the stars, because the stars is a card of healing and it brings light and it brings enlightenment. It is also a card of uh, wish fulfillment and all around happiness. Uh, now, what's interesting also in your pyramid, Libra, is that it doesn't like the, the position of the star is not an outcome kind of position. It's not in the bottom. It's not in the top. You know, it's sort of in between. So we're not seeing yet that you gain clarity within the week. But I also but I think that despite these blockages or, you know, this, this, I, this uh, situation where you're not really finding answers, I think you have a lot of hope. And the cards are certainly supportive of this. They encourage you to have hope. Uh, don't feel like you're stuck. Don't feel like uh, there's never going to be a bottom to this. And it doesn't feel desperate this way. No, it doesn't, you know. Uh, but the stars are still here to open you up to inspiration. So it's totally okay to 
set something aside, Libra, uh, to go off and do something else, and soon enough you'll get the inspiration to pursue it. And you know, sometimes answers come to us when we least look for them. So give yourself a break and don't stress about this. And also, Libra, the, the travel cards that we see here can suggest that you physically take a break, like physically go somewhere, um, you know, change your mindset, change your atmosphere, and take this time out to think through your thoughts, to make up your mind, to, you know, to decide on whatever is pending in your life. So some really interesting cards in this sense. Now, in some circumstances, or for some of you Libras out there, in something like a context of work, a vacation could be due, or possibly the end of a job or the end of a project. And in this sense, it's looking like it's really successful. You've reached the top of, um, of the project, like you've completed it, you know, because we've got the star, which is high up, and the mountain, like the mountain top, the peak uh, of it all. So that can be a really successful venture where you're closing off a chapter. Now, the thing about the clouds after this is that it can mean that you're now thinking about how you move forward, what journey you move into, uh, what comes next. So that's an interesting transition as well. Looking at the coffin, mountain, and clouds, I really feel there's an element of blockage here where it's not really clear how you overcome this. Uh, but again, with the book, star, and clouds, you're going to get all of the ideas and the creativity that you need, Libra, in order to break through this. So have faith in yourself. Don't over worry about it. You know, soon enough, you're going to get the inspiration and the ideas to move forward. So I feel this is more about your path and your projects and, uh, you know, your personal affairs. Uh, Libra, and I'm not really seeing anything to do with relationships, other people, uh, your social life. It's really about your journey and maybe a blockage that you're going through and how to overcome it. And I really think you're gonna you're gonna be okay. I just think that what you need to do right now, based on these cards, Libra, is to take a break, to take a step back and uh, to let go a little bit so that more inspiration can come to you. So I think it's a, it's a lovely week to rest your mind, to rest yourself, to put something aside or even to end it altogether. Um, so it's either because you're having a blockage or because you've reached the top of something and you're, you're ready to move on. And so take a step back to uh, assess like how far you've come, to take stock of it all, and also to consider about what happens next. So I really think it's a week for yourself, Libra, more than anything else, you know, like assessing your journey and how far you've come. So let me know how you like these ideas and what you make of them. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. It's always interesting to see, you know, the variety of um, people's situations and how they reflect on the cards. I, I really love to read that. Thank you for tuning in, Libra. As always, very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. Okay, Scorpio, this is so lovely. We're seeing friends and family or your teammates, you know, colleagues, peers. There is a social element that clearly shows up in the cards. And we also have some really bright cards. We have the Clover and Star. Uh, these are two of the wish fulfillment cards. And we have the tree that is also very peaceful and happy. Um, really, the cards are very clear, Scorpio. This is a social week uh, and not necessarily social out at large in the public, but really more with your inner circle of friends, a family, your teammates on the job, or maybe even your employees with your business. It is looking really cozy and peaceful and happy. We have the bird, which is uh, usually a chattery card, uh, but it's also the card of conversations and discussions. And we see it with the house and tree. So it's really a good time to get together with friends, which is represented by the dog and have some good conversations, you know, catch up together and enjoy some really good times. So starting with the bottom row, Scorpio, we have the bird, house, and stars. And the bird and house is uh, really getting together for a conversation. And the stars is wish fulfillment and all around happiness. Now, the, um, these two cards here, the bird and house, can sometimes suggest something like an interview 
or a debate or you know something more on the professional side of things and that may be the case for you except I feel that the softer energies of the tree star and clover seem to suggest more uh, you know the friends the friendship your closer circle you know getting together for some good conversations and you know hanging out together and with the star this is definitely going to be healing for you you could also come out with some really good things you know depending on what you're what you're doing what you're after uh, but certainly the stars is a happy card uh, that brings lovely energies here now the tree and dog is lovely for growing friendships and growing relationships i think there's a, a deepening element of trust and uh, a closeness that is happening here so again a very good pair for your relationships and spending time with people who matter to you and at the top we have the clover it is one of the brightest cards of the deck uh, lovely for luck and all-around protection so again we're seeing a very beautiful uh, energy that surrounds these social cards your friends your family your peers your colleagues you know like your closer circle in life so, so very beautiful cards and very supportive of a happy social week now the bird tree and clover is lovely for conversations discussions talking things out uh, the tree and clover is very bright it certainly leads to very good things I think this can be productive and fruitful and you could get the answers that you want you could get the clarity that you want um, the conversation makes the relationship better and some lovely exchanges here and very much so on this side of the pyramid Scorpio we have the star and clover on either side of the dog and like I said the dog is typically the card of friends and friendships now, obviously these two cards uh, clover and star two of the brightest cards of the deck figuring together here in this line obviously telling us that these are wonderful relationships or a specific relationship uh, there's a beautiful collaboration beautiful connection and lovely chemistry just across the board so a beautiful set of cards and very straightforward also Scorpio suggesting good times with people mainly friends family uh, colleagues or anyone in your closer circle a really good time to kick back with them enjoy some good conversations catching up together and if this is about the job or some other context of your life Scorpio the cards are still really bright they're great for work they're great for your personal life they're great for any environment where you have peers colleagues that you enjoy some good times with so very much a focus on other people and yourself with other people and enjoying these good times so I hope you'll do that Scorpio and enjoy this this week let me know if you did let me know who were these people that you felt you were getting closer to this week it's always nice to read your comments and you know the specific circumstances of your life and how they reflected in the cards Thank you for tuning in Scorpio very best of luck with the week and until next time take very good care of yourself hello Sagittarius welcome to your weekly reading we are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you okay Sagittarius here is your pyramid cards and they're looking pretty good we have the beautiful flowers that is a very bright card so it really shines its optimism on the rest of the cards uh, we also have the coffin which is a card of endings and obviously with the flowers this can be a happy ending and we have some pretty solid cards here that point to your sense of stability a sense of security and possibly even wealth uh, because of the bear and fish so it looks like there's a few things happening here or perhaps there's a few possibilities let's go ahead and weave these cards together so in the bottom line we have a very bright message Sagittarius we have the flowers lilies and anchor and I think that um, you know given the lilies is about your life your life path and the anchor is a strong and solid card it's pretty clear from these cards that you're happy with what you're doing that you're on the right track that you're building some positive foundations and that they're bearing fruit so you you're seeing the rewards of your work and you're seeing some really positive outcomes here I think this is also a message of sticking with what you're doing pursuing what you're doing because it's it's leading to the results that you want it's clear that you're on the right track for growth and success whether this is on the job or your life as a whole or in some other area 
Now, Sagittarius, the coffin and bear is very much a combination of an ending or in the very least some kind of absence. So the coffin is typically about endings and the bear can make this pretty significant. So it can mean that you've achieved something and this would work really well with the bottom row because we saw uh, this element of conclusion and success uh, thanks to the flowers. So this can be a major phase that is coming to an end and certainly it would be the case with the coffin uh, and lily. Now at the top we have the fish, Sagittarius, and this is the card of money, uh, finance, business, enterprise, and also uh, work and employment if that's what applies to you. Now the, um, the fish is in two different lines here, uh, but um, uh, it is supported uh, very much uh, by this side of the pyramid. On this side, it can point to, uh, to a weight for funds. Um, but in the broader context of your pyramid, I think that this ending, the success, the milestone that you've achieved uh, seems to be in terms of your money, your work, your finances, and this area of your life. Uh, so you could be closing off a chapter and moving into a new beginning, and uh, it can be prosperous moving forward. Now on this side, like I said, um, the coffin and fish can point to a weight for funds, but it's really nice to see the flowers. Now I would have liked to see the flowers on this side to suggest um, the idea that what you were waiting for comes through, but it can also be supported uh, or it can also suggest that with the flowers at the beginning of the line. Uh, and certainly, even if it's not yet coming through Sagittarius, I think you don't have to worry about it. You have good reason to be optimistic about it. Just let it go and it's gonna come through. And actually, when we look at this side of the pyramid, it is a very empowering triplet for money. Usually the bear is often associated with wealth and income and seeing it with the fish can very much suggest that. On top of this we have the anchor and the anchor a bit like the bear is very strong and solid it's very um, it has very powerful foundations and so this is really good for your money your finances your prosperity as a whole. Uh, again I really think you're on the right track Sagittarius uh, it looks like what you're doing is leading to results or will uh, lead to results and it looks like you're on a sound uh, foundation when it comes to money and finances. So this is looking really good. And also when it comes to this waiting uh, situation here, if, if that's what applies to you, if you're waiting for funds, you know, like I suspected, the flowers really uh, helps with it coming through. And certainly the side of the pyramid suggests that as well. And uh, you know what also stands out to me is the fish and lily, like this pair here in this uh, mini cross, if you like. Uh, this is great for a prosperous career and a, a prosperous lifestyle. And again, I'm seeing that your financial element is pretty strong this week, Sagittarius. And if it's not money as such, you know, it's, it's really good for your work, your activity, you know, your projects. All of it is, uh, is on the right track and it's, it's bearing fruit. So stick with what you're doing and build on it and commit to it uh, because it's obvious that it's uh, on the right track and leading to success. And Sagittarius, this, uh, these cards are, seem to be focused more on this area of life, like your work and your money. I'm not really seeing relationship cards, other people cards. It's not really social. And uh, honestly, uh, Sagittarius, it's the case for many of us this week. It seems to be a less social week for many of us. And so I feel that, uh, you know, this is in common with others. And so your cards are focused on your journey, uh, some milestones here, your foundations, your sense of security. So focus on this while the energy of the week is focused on that uh, and, and take advantage of it um, to, you know, to do the right things for you, Sagittarius, build on them and attract this prosperity that we're seeing in your cards. I also think it's a good idea to take it easy. Uh, you know, if you need to sort of wait on some things or, you know, close some things off, Go with the flow, Sagittarius, it's looking good. Um, it's the right time to do this. And also enjoy the completion, the successes, you know, so a little bit like um, uh, taking it easy, even though you're actually building some, some pretty solid stuff, there is also an easy, peaceful energy. So also enjoy that, Sagittarius. So lovely cards, I would say. Let me know what you make of them. As always, I look forward to your thoughts, your feedback. Very best of luck with the week. Thank you for watching. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Capricorn, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today. Let's deal out your cards and see what is in store for you. 
Okay, Capricorn, here is your lovely cards. These are some really bright cards. We have the Clover and Sun. These are great uh, for all around success. We have the Ship and Stork. They are very active cards. And we have the fish at the top that is typically associated with money and finances. And so seeing them with these cards is, um, is a very bright message indeed. So with the stork bird and clover, there can be some good news here that comes your way. I think it helps you kick things off. Uh, it helps you, it gives you the green light to move forward. And also it makes you happy generally. Uh, this can also be an active week, uh, you know, a, a chattery week. Maybe you're communicating with others. Um, you're getting answers, you're making calls, you know, you're interacting and all of this is really leading to positive results. So you find that there's a flow uh, to, to the things that you're doing to your activity. And also, like I said, it answers your wishes and uh, really, really lovely messages here. Uh, the ship and sun is another beautiful combination. The sun is another one of those very bright cards. Uh, it's in fact one of the brightest cards of the deck and so much so that it can trump even the most challenging cards. At least I see it this way. Obviously, with the, with the ship, you're achieving your goals. The ship is a card of adventure and um, moving forward and that flow. And obviously with the sun, it's lovely here. It's also about travel and um, Capricorn. I think I've been seeing this in your cards uh, a few times already. We're seeing also a few other travel cards. We've got the stork ship and bird. And each of these cards can be associated with travel. So for some of you, uh, you could be traveling and this is definitely uh, well aspected. It's encouraged. These are very beautiful cards and it's likely that your travels or your adventures, your movement, your activity is uh, very much bringing some wonderful results. The fish, like we said, is the card of money and finances. So this can be great for your income, for your money in general, and also for your activity, work, uh, business, etc. And so it's lovely to see these beautiful cards with the fish. So prosperity and also wish fulfillment in this area. Uh, great cards for business empowerment, for broadening your horizons, for venturing out, um, for seeing uh, your efforts bring results. Really beautiful cards across, um, across all of these areas, mainly focused on your work and activity. The stork with the ship and fish points to, uh, again, success and seeing the results of your adventures and ventures. Uh, what's also interesting, Capricorn, is that the stork and ship is often associated with uh, travel and even uh, sometimes migration and traveling long term. So that can be the case for some of you, but of course I appreciate that not every single Capricorn out there is going to be traveling this week. Um, these are still wonderful cards for achieving goals, venturing out, uh, a sense of expansion. Yeah, I think that's a really good work for, for your pyramid this week. There is definitely expansion and growth and a lot of prosperity and abundance that comes with that. And the clover, sun, and fish is lovely for money. I mean, this is definitely about wealth. Um, you know, however you define wealth and prosperity and that feeling of abundance, we are definitely seeing uh, this for you, Capricorn. This is great for jobs as well. It could be a job offer. It could be a promotion, more income, uh, success with your projects and your adventures. Uh, really uh, a lot of growth, uh, you know, and expansion, like I said. So the cards are lovely. Uh, they're mainly focused on your project and your work, but they could apply um, in more personal ways. But in this sense, Capricorn, I'm not really seeing people cards. I mean, the bird can be about communication, but it's not really that personal thing that we're seeing here in the cards. Instead, I think it's more about you and your projects. And to be honest, Capricorn, this is the case for many of us. Like, it's not really a social week. There's just a few signs that have a, a social element that is highlighted in the cards. For many of us, it's about our, our projects, our path. Um, there's a sense of stillness and taking stock of how far we've come and things like that. I've been seeing that throughout the signs. For your part, Capricorn, it's uh, all around success and it's really a beautiful set of cards. So very best of luck with this. I certainly hope this manifests for you. Do affirm it. Let me know how it plays out uh, and leave me a comment or two to let me know. Thank you so much for tuning in, Capricorn. Again, very best of luck with the week and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out these cards and see what is in store for you. 
Okay, Aquarius, here is your pyramid. It's looking pretty good. It's looking easy and smooth. Uh, everything is looking like positive. We have the fox that's a little bit tricky, but I'm seeing it with the fox and uh, I'm seeing it with the fish, I mean, and that can be good for work. Uh, with the garden and ring, it can be a bit tricky because the fox tends to be tricky when it comes to people. I'm also seeing movement and progress. Uh, you know, the ship is quite nice. It's nice to see it at, at the top. Uh, you're in a flow. I think you're on a roll. I think things are moving forward and things are generally okay. You could be getting some work opportunities. That's that's quite exciting. So let's get into these lines. Uh, in the bottom line, we have the fox and the garden and the ring. These two cards are relationship cards and um, they could represent your connections, be a certain environment that you're part of, your network, um, and you know, such environments. Now the fox is great um, for being clever and for knowing your way around a group of people. So it's a good idea that you network with intentions and also remember to be diplomatic and calm and calculated and discreet. At the same time, Aquarius, the fox can warn against tricky people, usually deceptive, self-interested types. Uh, but again, I think that I, I'm not seeing any drama around this. I'm not seeing any risks or danger. Uh, you know, it's just really about now navigating certain people and just being aware who you're in contact with. In view of the rest of the cards, I think Aquarius, the idea of being um, focused on your goals and seeing what you can get out of this environment is suggested here. It can also be a line that points to the job. Uh, the garden can be the workplace, the fox can be the job uh, or your employment. And the ring here points to your connections on the job or you know your colleagues. So it's a good idea to be part of the team, you know, to do team things and be a team player. But the fox remains a bit tricky when it comes to people, Aquarius. So just keep in mind, you know, that you want to be, uh, you know, clever and um, and also reasonably self-interested and also aware that others might be playing to win. So diplomacy is your best bet and you know having that objective a little bit um, a little bit detached attitude might be might be nice. Now the fish and stork is really nice for things happening with money finances, business. Uh, the stork is an active card. The fish is a card of prosperity. And together there, there can be some kind of opportunity that comes your way or some activity that you get into uh, and that uh, supports you or advantages you. And certainly seeing the ship at the top supports this idea, Aquarius. The ship is very much about ventures, adventures, trade and sales and business, all of that is well supported by the ship. And it's nice to see it at the top because it's like open-ended, it like opens this um, direction for you, you're setting sail in something. Um, so we're seeing, you know, that element of um, opportunity opening up for you. And it seems to build on the bottom line here where maybe your contacts or your network um, and these efforts that you put into this environment are paying off, you know? So again, go with intention, see what you can get out of it because it looks like you will get something out of it. Now the fox, fish and ship is very much about a project or a venture. I really think you could land a deal, uh, Aquarius. So again, um, this networking or these connections or this meeting here, it pays off. Uh, so make it a point to get something out of this because it looks like you can. And the ring, stork and ship can point to a collaboration. So again, we're seeing this idea of a deal, of a, a, con a contact that can help you move forward with something. It can be a contract uh, with someone that engages you in a project. Um, so quite empowering when it comes to your projects with money and business. And again, it looks like this environment or this network or this uh, you know, area of the marketplace, wh wherever you operate in, uh, is really uh, supportive. Uh, so that's nice for your ambitions, Aquarius, and it can kick you off into some interesting adventure here, so go for it. Now, I do think your cards are more geared towards work, money, business, um, and not so much your personal life. Uh, but of course, you know, with the ring and garden, we could be looking at more personal relationships. Again, I don't think this is the most likely interpretation because of these cards, you know, the active cards here. But but in case it's more focused for relationships for you, and I mean personal relationships, Aquarius, um, 
it's uh, it's looking good you know the fox can be a bit tricky like maybe there's a question mark around how this person feels or maybe you're not sure how you feel about them uh, but it certainly kicks off nicely as we see from the top uh, there can be some interesting activity here uh, the things you do together and actually the fish is really good for sex and sensuality so maybe there is that um, attraction and chemistry between you and this person so whether it's in personal relationships or in your work and business life, Aquarius, the cards are really well supported and they engage you, uh, they bring opportunity and forward movement and activity and collaborations. So quite an active week, Aquarius, with lots of benefits and, and positive outcomes. Uh, I hope you affirm this for yourself. Let me know how it plays out uh, for you. Leave me a comment or two. Uh, if you're willing to share the details, they're always interesting to read. Thank you for tuning in, Aquarius. Very best of luck with the week. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Pisces, welcome to your weekly reading. We are doing a pyramid layout today with the Zen deck. Let's deal out your cards and see what is ahead for you. Okay Pisces, here is your pyramid and I have to say it is quite special. Um, the, cards are, the cards are somewhat mute um, and um, they are focused on news, knowledge and communication. But we also have the heart and scythe combination, which typically points to a heartbreak. So I'm not sure how this is going to play out with the rest of them. Of course, we're going to weave the cards and from the ground up, we get a better picture. So starting with the bottom row, we have the heart, book and mountain. Uh, obviously, with the book and mountain, something is being kept from you or is a mystery or is a little bit out of reach. And with the heart, it can mean a couple of different things. If you've got your a heart set on a relationship Pisces or you're thinking about someone then you could be wondering you know how they feel or what their what their thoughts are um, they could be out of touch and that could be you know making you uh, want them wanting to know what is up with them in another sense Pisces with the book we could be looking at your passions uh, some interesting projects here that you're after and um, with the mountain, it can, I feel, still be in process of a, of a discovery phase. So the mountain is a card of blockages, and it's also a card of travel and locations abroad. And so with the heart and book, I feel that this could be an exploration kind of phase, uh, or maybe you're delving into some knowledge and, you know, there's like a bit of a, a, bit of a hike shall we say, with the mountain, where you have to discover a little bit what this is about. So quite interesting, and I would say quite different. Now, the Scythian letter is definitely a breakthrough and um, news that is uh, revealed suddenly. It can be sharp. It can be potentially disappointing because it T-crosses with the Scythian heart, and often the Scythian heart is a heartbreak in a very obvious and literal way, which is typical of Lenormand. Uh, so we also have the writer at the top, which is also a news card. And notice also, Pisces, that we have the scythe and the book, which breaks open the book. So this mystery that we saw in the bottom row is revealed in the top row. Um, also, something that was held back or perhaps you were holding back on expressing yourself or putting something out there is sort of unleashed with the top cards. The scythe and writer is quite aggressive. The scythe and letter is uh, very, like, very clear in, in breaking open the letter, breaking open the book. Um, it is like a revealing um, energy in contrast to the secrecy and this, um, uh, you know, this being a way uh, that is captured by the book and mountain. So a big contrast here between the bottom cards and the top cards. And it's very clear that something is revealed. Um, there is also forward movement, uh, thanks to the lovely writer. And it's uh, it really opens up whatever was closed off uh, in the bottom line. Now, like I said, the heart with the scythe can point to a heartbreak and the scythe and writer can point to a change of direction. Um, it's possible that perhaps you give up on something, Pisces, and you decide to embrace something else. It's possible that this breakthrough and the news that comes through, um, they, they drive you to do something different, to go in a different direction, maybe to sacrifice something for something else or decide that you're going to cut something away and embrace this, um, this opportunity or this um, idea that comes through this piece of news. 
And the mountain letter and writer is very much about news and contact and communication, often with a place abroad, because the mountain tends to be associated with a location in a, in a different place. It doesn't have to be strictly that, though. I do think that also there is... Um, it's nice to see the letter and writer after the mountain because we're getting another confirmation that whatever was blocked now comes through. Whatever was closed off now opens up. Whatever was held back is now released. So there can be quite a lot of momentum for you this week, um, Pisces. Now what's curious about your cards is that we don't have any indication about where this is happening. This could happen in your life in general, something that affects your life as a whole, or it can be in a specific area of your life like the job or, you know, anything else. Uh, the relationship element, you know, it's a bit tricky with these cards, Pisces, because yes, we have the heart and the letter and the rider, but um, I'm not really seeing this idea of a, of a collaboration or a connection or something like that. I feel that there's a lot of momentum from the news that makes you move forward in a certain direction, uh, but not so much a relationship element. Still, if we were going to read these cards as a, in a relationship context, I feel they can be a bit more challenging because of the scythe and heart. And this is pretty clear. Um, to it, it, it pretty much represents a, a heartbreak. So in the sense of a personal relationship, Pisces, uh, the bottom row is obviously this idea of being held back, someone who was away, you know, not sure how they were feeling. And then with the scythe and letter, there's a, an opening and a breakthrough, and then the writer moves forward. So in case of a heartbreak, which I think is likely, uh, there is this idea of moving on where finally you hear back from this person and it doesn't look like it works out in the way that you thought. And so there is, you know, you move on with the writer. That is very possible uh, with these cards in this context. I have to say, Pisces, that it, it might be a relationship, but not necessarily a love relationship. It could be a friendship, a, a colleague, or, you know, someone in, else in your life where the connection doesn't really materialize in the way that you were thinking. Uh, there is this breakthrough, uh, this news that comes through that clarifies that. Uh, and then you move, you move past it, you know, you, you move on from it. So again, uh, there is forward movement, like after um, a time of being held back. But even if it's disappointing, what is, what is nice about it is that it unleashes you to move forward. At least now you know where you stand and uh, you, can, you can move on. You can, you know, move on with your life and let this go. Um, so, so I think there is a, there is a, uh, positive outcomes from this week. Uh, there is forward movement, there is clarity, revelation of something, uh, you know, something that was held back comes through. And at least you know that much so that you can make decisions and act and, and you know, get on with your life. Um, I also suspect, Pisces, that this could be about a passion project. And I, and I say this because of the heart and book where maybe you've got your heart set on certain projects and now you you decide not to hold back anymore and you're going to give this a try and move move forward with it it can involve getting the green light it can involve getting uh, certain bits of information that can inspire you to move forward uh, it can like the news and, th and this uh, element here that we see through the book letter and writer what is that green light, the stimulus, that input or information? It's going to really come down to your specifics. Uh, but the idea is that you can break, uh, you can get past any blockages, you can break through that and take some tangible steps. So I do think it's exciting. I think it could be faster paced when this is, once this is unleashed and um, you, you at least know that you can move forward now. So interesting cards, Pisces. I certainly look forward to your thoughts and your feedback about this how you resonated with the cards and maybe some specifics that are unique to you. It's always interesting uh, to read these details. Thank you for tuning in. As always, very best of luck with the week and until next time, take very good care of yourself.